Good morning, Mets fans, and happy Thursday. Welcome to Driving with Mr. Met. Not exactly a happy day. Um, <clears throat> yesterday was, uh, was an unpleasant day for a couple of reasons. First and foremost, the Mets dropped the second game of their two-game series with the Rangers in a pretty lopsided 5-1 to one game. And last night, uh, the Mets traded Jay Bruce to the Cleveland Indians. So not exactly, uh, at least on the surface, um, a positive end to the day. So I sort of blame myself for um, Montero's performance yesterday. Uh, I, uh, I, I was just talking about how I really felt like he was showing signs of improvement and he wasn't nibbling and he was trusting his stuff a little bit more. And then he went out and threw 40 pitches in the first inning yesterday. And my God, I mean, this guy has more lives than, than a cat. Um, there's absolutely, positively no way he should be on any major league roster. He has to have one of the worst ERAs in baseball over the last three years for starting, pitcher, starting pitchers. I know there's not a really huge sample size, but the, the guy just... He just absolutely stinks. And unfortunately, because of all of the injuries, the Mets have no choice but to use him every fifth day. And it's just, it's just painful because uh, as, much as, I, uh, as much as I've ragged on him, I, deep down I really did want him to succeed. I really did want to see him do well. But the other part of me was always like, it's never going to happen. And... I, like I said, I was starting to come around a little bit, and now I'm right back to get out of my sight. I don't ever want to see you again. Honestly, they should just start offering refunds to anyone who has tickets to a Montero game because he's abysmal. Um, the offense was abysmal yesterday, speaking of abysmal. Um, other than Wilmer Flores' home run, the Mets didn't manage to get anybody across the plate, and uh, they were kept it in check by... Uh, by the Rangers and you know whatever it is what it is back to 11 under heading into Philly tonight <clears throat> starting a series with Jacob deGrom on the mound um, so that's always um, a positive sign when deGrom is pitching because it, it, I feel like it's the only chance that we legitimately have a, a shot to win on to the Jay Bruce news um <clears throat> I hate, that this, I hate that this trade happened. I know why it happened. Uh, I understand why it happened. But I hate that it happened. Um, you know, I really, really liked Jay Bruce a lot. I, uh, you know, he ends up finishing this season as a Met with 29 home runs. I really, really wanted to see him make a run at that single season mark, you know, 41. I think he was on pace for 42 if uh, the season continued and he kept hitting the way he was hitting. So it's just unfortunate that we aren't going to get to see that. But, um, you know, the Indians had a need and um, they came calling. There was a lot of chatter on Twitter last night about how the Mets are the worst and how the Wilpons are terrible and how Sandy Alderson is an idiot. And, uh, you know, some of the rumors were he could have, uh, Sandy could have moved um, uh, Bruce to a team like the Yankees. If he'd have picked up some of the salary, and he would have gotten a lot more in return, but um, he didn't do that. You know, obviously the Mets did not do that. They uh, they shipped him to Cleveland and got a unranked relief pitching prospect, uh, who I think the prospect word is generous for this kid. So uh, I'm gonna miss Jay Bruce, but I understand what's going on. I understand why he's gone. Um, this opens up some possibilities for the rest of this season, and it also opens up some questions for next season. Possibility number one for this season is Dom Smith gets an immediate call-up now. Um, Bruce was spotting uh, some time at first base and, and at right field. Um, without Bruce here, right field is going to be completely vacant, so until Ligares comes off the DL, which frankly could be as soon as today, um, but until he comes off the DL, uh, there's really no one to play right field every day, so we're going to end up with Granderson um, probably in center, um, 
and Conforto in right, or Grandy will just play right, and they'll, they'll, you know, they'll continue the Conforto and setter um, experiment, if you will. Um, Dom Smith would, be, would then play first base, uh, and uh, or they'll just keep running Wilmer out there and keep running through their musical chairs with uh, Walker um, spotting some time at first base as well. I don't know. I mean, it, it opens up some possibilities there, but... For me, I really want to see Dom Smith get up here sooner rather than later. Give us six or seven weeks of time to evaluate him and look at him and enjoy what might be a, 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 another small positive from this season. Um, the, the big question for me is how do you replace Jay Bruce next year? Because as you guys know, I have um, long been an advocate of offering him a qualifying offer and trying to get him back on a one-year deal for 2018 because... Um, you know, Jay Bruce is a power hitter. And he, like I said, he hit 29 home runs this year. I mean, how are you going to replace that production right now with the guys that you have? I like Dom Smith, uh, but there, he's not a 29 home run hitter. He's not going to hit you 30 home runs. Oh, well, we also lost Lucas Duda, who also had the potential to hit 30 home runs. So that's 60 home runs, effectively that the Mets have given up on for next year. And I'm not saying I disagree. I'm just making the point that there are, there are, there's a significant drop-off in, produ- in run production in the loss of Duda and Bruce. And the Mets have to address that next year. At, at this rate, it looks as though they're going to have to overpay for Mike Moustakas because looking at the free agent class, it's just, there's just not much out there. So it looks like Moustakas is going to be the guy to fill in the blanks. And I'm very concerned that Moustakas is coming off this season, which has been a career year for him as far as his power numbers are concerned. And I don't know that he's going to translate to City Field. I, I just am very nervous about that. So I, I do think that he's the best fit as far as the position that needs to be filled. He can play third base and fill a massive void there. Uh, and that really fills in the infield very nicely. Uh, the outfield remains a question, but we're going to talk about that in another, at another time. Uh, so for now, I appreciate your watching the video. Uh, thanks for that. You can follow me on Twitter at Mr. Underscore Matt. And as the Mets head into Philly tonight to hopefully win some ball games, I leave you with this. Let's go Mets.